Welcome to this very special league list analysis for our upcoming season two. You bosses voted Lawrence, me, to run the Orcs. Well, you know what? I'm not an Orc veteran. I'm not even remotely experienced with the Orcs, but every time I've ever run them, I have really enjoyed using them. And now that I've done a deep dive into their book, you know what? they do have some competitive chops. They're a really interesting codex. I'm actually really looking forward to running them and seeing what you guys think of my own unique little twist uh, of the competitive side of the Orcs. So uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. It is a Lawrence special. It is 2,000 points on the nose. And the culture that I've gone for probably isn't a surprise. I am going to run Goffs. Um, Goffs are just... For me, probably the best culture because they kind of just enhance what you really want to already be good at, which is being in combat. Exploding hits in combat on sixes, plus one strength on the turn that you charge or heroically intervene. It just makes me better at doing the job which I'm supposed to do. Because let's face it, the orc shooting, although it can weirdly be kind of good sometimes, is not what you necessarily want to rely on, okay? So I've gone for goths for that reason, basically. Let's go over the lists. We've got an all new Warlords. Thank you, Fletcher, for the glow up on this and uh, uh, my new vision of the green tide. We have Buzgit and Azrag, the Jaw Ripper. So this is Wa Jaw Ripper that uh, we are spreading across the Imperium with. And basically what he, they represent is an Orc Warboss in Mega Armor. So he's got his Uch Chopper. I have actually made him the Warlord and I have actually given him a Warlord trait in this instance. So I've given him proper Killy, which is the, the actual Goff's specific Warlord trait, which will give him an additional attack and an additional AP, which is really nice because with all of the exploding hits and then potentially when I call a War as well, you kind of need the war boss on foot unless you're running Gaz to call the War because it's such a clutch thing for Orcs in my opinion. Um, it makes him pretty good in combat, but what I wanted to do, there isn't any really good relic you can give him, funnily enough, because for some weird reason, the Mega Boss model doesn't have a claw, so you can't give it the Killer Claw, but you can make it really resilient. And because actually the model is like this, I imagine that Azrag was, has been ripped apart several times over different campaigns, and he's basically more Cyborg than Orc now. So I've actually given him the Cyborg armor, which is a four up in Vulnerable, and it halves damage as well. This actually makes him pretty resilient. It's quite a tough cookie to deal with. His toughness six as well. So um, I actually rate the War Boss in Mega Armor. I think they're a really good unit. And because it's the centerpiece of this army, in my opinion, it's really nice to be able to run it. Nearly ran Gaz, but Gaz is out for now. I couldn't quite get everything else in that I wanted. Let me know if you think that's a mistake if you're running Goffs or not. We then move over to the second HQ, and I have a War Boss on War bike. Now this is probably a bit of a no-brainer, no surprise in fact if you are an Orc fan. I of course have given him the Killer Claw. I have paid for a Warlord trait uh, which is uh, brutal but cunning which means that he can pull his attacks for anything. Any attack that doesn't go through to the damage step I get to roll another attack and because the, the, the Killer Claw Relic which I've also paid for with a CP is no minus to hit and it's damage three it's just a savage, savage weapon. And this is kind of my combat missile. He's a massive problem for anyone to deal with. If he gets his attacks through, he can kill most targets in the game with relative ease. Obviously, there's going to be some exceptions to that, but he is going to be a reliable killer for me on the battlefield. We then move over to troops. It's very simple. Um, because I am running an Arcs of Omen detachment, I'm not actually relying on troops as a, as a compulsory slot. I'm actually gonna use fast attack as a compulsory slot, but I do want the troops because it's important when I go over my secondaries later that I have these units that can hold backfield objectives or potentially sit and do actions where I need it. So I've actually paid for three units of 10 grots. It is a bit begrudging um, because I don't really want to spend the points on chaff but the good news is they're so cheap that you don't feel too bad doing it. You know, sure, I'd like to take some more killer units, but the grots are kind of a necessity. I can't really build a list without at least three units of them uh, so far in the York lists that I've run. So they're in, they're there to do actions, they're there to hold objectives. They can't really do anything else, so we'll move swiftly on. We then move to the elites. And now this is to go with Azrag and Buzzgit. We have not one. Not two, 
but three units of four mega knobs. They've all got claws, they've all got custom shooters. Now, why have I got so many mega knobs? I know that regular knobs would be really good as well because of some slight points um, decreases in terms of their weaponry from the Arcs of Omen Unitorum Field Manual. Uh, I think the mega knobs are really good in the Orc Army because at first I wasn't sold on them. At first I didn't like them. I hated the minus one to hit, but when you're near the war boss, he can help um, ignore that uh, debuff. Um, and they're one of your few truly resilient units. They're not impossible to kill, but they do have a two up armor save. They are three wounds, they are tough. And with the Orc strats, you can potentially make them damage three in combat. And that sweet potential to get damage three is just too good to pass up in my opinion. So you know what? I went, I'm all in. I'm gonna lean into the Mega Knobs here. I'll need to work out a delivery system and I'll need to work out how I can spread the threat if you like, because if I put them all in one big blob, there's too many things out there which I think could target them, like blow up their transport and then leave them stranded and just cut through them. You know, I'm facing things like Votan in this league where the toughness won't matter because they put grudge tokens on me. So I'm really trying to split my eggs across multiple baskets here. So that's why I've gone for three units of four. Again, let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna go over to the heavy support because it links right in to the Mega Knobs. Uh, and I don't know, maybe this is a controversial choice. I don't see many other competitive lists running more than two of these at most. Sometimes they only run one and then they'll give it, they will upgrade it with the fortress. But I've gone for three battle wagons. And I haven't given them the yard cases either. Shock, horror, right? Why have I done this? Well, they're relatively cheap. They've got a lot of wounds. They're pretty tough. I know that they could be toughness eight with the yard case. I could, that is a change I could make if I take a loss and I, I feel that I really need it. But I've gone for the death rollers. That's all I've gone for. Just a battle wagon and a death roller on each one. Because one, it makes them a legitimate threat in combat. Two, I'm gonna be zipping these up the field because as of course you've no doubt guessed, all three of the Mega Knob units will start in a battle wagon each. Now I can reserve for free if I'm really worried about you know certain certain armies blowing all three of them up with ease, turn one, and that may be possible. And this is also part of the reason why I've not gone for the Ard case. Because the Ard case will only make me toughness eight, and when you've got people like Votan running around in this meta, which basically auto wound you, with depending on the amount of grudge to tokens they've got in the shooting phase, uh, sorry, in the to hit part of the shooting phase, your toughness becomes less reliable. Plus there's so many high strength things out there, unless the heavy weapon is strength eight, like I'm facing dark lances or something, the T8's not really making too much of a difference. So that was my thinking. Again, let me know what you guys think. We then go over to the heart of the army, okay? I say it's the heart of the army because this is where I've got the most slots. I've got three units of Storm Boys. Now I've always been a fan of Storm Boys. One, I think the models are really cool. Two. Mobile orcs are what you want. Mobility is the biggest issue they've got. You know, we could do things like trucks, truck boys, that sort of jazz, but I personally think having fast moving infantry um, and all, every boss knob's got a claw on him as well, by the way, is just the way to go. It's good because if I need to zip over and try and grab an objective, because you can't put value on fly. You know, being in a truck's one thing, but being able to fly is another. Um, and they've got lots of attacks. You know, the exploding hits with goths, um, they'll be good at doing actions if I need to in a pinch and in some in some area, but mainly they'll be there to take enemy units off of objectives, to swarm bodies around an objective and to kill enemy, you know, enemy bodies or tie things up like tanks and so forth. So the storm boys will all storm forward. We then have, this is the unusual twist. I know I've got three battle wagons, so that's already slightly unusual. I've gone for three units of what I'm going to call the Death Shark Squadrons. That's right, these are my Orc Special Forces. Okay, so I've got three units of four Death Copters. Who takes Death Copters? Well, you know what, I don't know. I've not seen them in any real competitive lists for quite some time. I think they used to be a thing like maybe two editions ago. <laughs> but now, now, not so much. I'm sure that a lot of York fans will, will be able to give me a very educated answer as to why this is not a good choice. What I'm going to do now is say why I think it is a good choice. And I think if you play it well, much like any 
good competitive player. You can actually give them units which may not even be A tier and they can still use them really well. For, the, for me, these guys fulfill a role which I need filled. One, I don't like to build lists with, without any firepower if I, if, if I can avoid it. There are certain times where you can get away with it, for sure, but I think a good balance list will have an ability to also be able to strike out at range, even if you are mainly a, a, a combat army. Now, the thing with the Death Copters are, they're actually not bad shooting-wise. For a start, they're a vehicle, so if I move with them, I'm not suffering from a minus one to hit penalty with firing their copter rockets. Their copter rockets have multiple shots, their strength eight, their minus two, their damage three. You know, so when they are, I know they're only hitting on fives and potentially someone could do lightning fast reactions or whatever it may be. But when you've got that many shots, you know, the averages are, I'll get a couple through. And you know, when you damage three, Odds are on that I only need a couple to go through to do some, you know, degrading damage. And if I've got three units, I can potentially c concentrate all my fire and take out something large or something mean. Um, so it's really useful. But the key thing is, they've got fly. They move 14 inches. On goths, they get an extra attack. Or sorry, they've got exploding hits. And on the turn that I declare a war, they'll have an extra attack. And their blades make them strength five minus one and it actually makes them nine attacks each on the turn that I declare a war, which I think is really cool. That makes them a real blender of a unit. You know, anything toughness three or even toughness four without that many wounds, I'm going to be hitting so many times and wounding so many times that I'm going to be forcing a lot of saves. They're also great at just tying up because they can fly, much like the Storm Boys, tying up high value enemy targets, you know, Lehman Russ, that sort of thing. So this is why I've gone for Death Copters. Now, I know that Squig Hog Boys are really popular. Um, I know that, you know, to a degree, the Dragsters or maybe even the Scrap Jets could be a, uh, you know, a, a valid alternative. Um, and maybe after a few games, I'll be like, you know what, the Death Copters just don't cut it. But looking at it, I think they're really good. I'd much rather have a Death Copter be hit by some, you know, silly Votan high damage weapon where you kill one Death Copter as opposed to taking out one scrap jet, you know, or one all of my wounds in one single model. Because I've got all of, because they're also four wounds each. So they're kind of like deceptively irritating to kill because a lot of things are like, the higher stuff is like damage three. So it means they'd still be alive on one wound. So look, I'm really happy with this choice. It is 2000 points on the nose. I think my unit selection is solid. I think I've got speed. I think I've got a good spread of combat power. You know, I can take out high value targets with the Mega Knobs. I can take out hordes with the Death Copters and the Storm Boys and even threaten, you know, um, I guess like moderately tough uh, elite units with those just with the weight of attacks as well. I've got some good firepower from the Death Copters. I'm not saying I've got a lot of firepower, but it's good enough quality to keep me in there so that I can concentrate on one high value target at a time. So I'm really happy with that too. I've got an absolute combat missile in terms of the War Boss and War Bike. Azrak himself with his with his buddy Buzzkit can also mix it up in combat. Not quite as well as the, as the um, War Boss on the bike, but well enough to be a serious threat and he's super tough as well. I think the list is cool. I think it's balanced. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to play. What do you guys think? Next up, why don't we talk some secondaries? All right, folks, secondary wise, um, basically the, the one that I'm pretty much, in my opinion at the moment, unless I find that when I'm playing the games, it changes drastically, I'm always gonna take the green tide. I think it's a really good secondary. Uh, at the end of my turn, I will score one victory point for each table quarter I hold. It does count as models rather than units as well, which is quite interesting. So for every 10 models that I have in a table quarter, now you do have to be three inches away from another table quarter. That's not that bad. And because it goes by models rather than unit, I don't exclude a unit if I've got a couple of models from that unit within three inches of another quarter. So little things like that, you can generally, given my model count, because the Death Copters will, will, will count as well, um, the Storm Boys will count, the Grots will count, Mega Knobs will count, you know, Battle Wagons will count, and I'm pretty much going to be out across the board, swarming the board as much as possible. So this is a really, really good one for me to have. You know, I think I can accrue at least two every turn, if not three, and hopefully four. So I'm always going to take that one. Now the second one is up for debate. Stomp them good is really good in my opinion. So it's another orc one. Basically, if I kill more, more enemy units in melee, 
then they kill of me, I'll get three victory points. If I kill more than double, or, or rather double, um, I'll get an additional one. So I can score three to four victory points a turn. Now, obviously, usually turn one, I'm not going to score anything on that. Turn two, you would hope that I would. Now, it will be situational. If I feel for some reason I'm against a really fast army or a, a super resilient army where I may not actually, there's a risk of me not actually killing at least one unit in combat a turn, then I won't take it. But I think generally it'll probably be quite reliable. I'm going to do it on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, it's from the purge the enemy slot. Um, if I don't take that, I will then go for, you know, either no prisoners, for example, um, or I'll go for uh, maybe bring it down. Again, dependent on what it is that I'm facing. Now, the third one, I'll probably always take raise the banners. There is, because the Grot's going to be good at that, right? And, you know, I, I picture that most people are not going to be wanting to come towards me because as an Orc player, obviously, I'm very good in combat and I've got quite a lot of models. I imagine that I should be able to get a midfield or at least an objective or two near my deployment zone for Raise the Banners because most people aren't going to come towards me because they'll know that they'll get countered. If there were some really good combat armies maybe I would maybe I would reconsider, but actually, you know what? I really wouldn't. I'd still take Raise the Banners, because even if it's just going off of my deployment zone, it's just one of those things that accrues, you know, over time. And even if I only get it for a turn or two on a midfield objective, it will score me, I think, around 10 points every game. And for me, if I get a double digit score in a secondary, that's usually good enough for me. Now, of course, I can swap this out, you know, if I come, come up against an army which I feel that a couple of other secondaries will pair better because I'm always going to take green tide, then great, I can do that. I've got the flexibility. But generally, I think razor banners will work. Now, there is get the good bits. The problem with get the good bits, it is potentially worth six victory points a turn. I'll consider it. It may be that this is a worthwhile one doing because I do have three units of 10 grots. But they have to be objectives outside of the enemy deployment zone or yours to do the action. If I do it with the grots, it is completed at the end of the turn. It's really going to depend on the mission. It's really going to depend on the opponent. It can potentially be much better than Razor Banners in the right matchup. But this is why I'm saying I'll probably go for Razor Banners more. Generally speaking, I think I can get 10 points in every secondary that I pick, if not more. And if you're getting double digits in your secondaries, you're off to a good start. So this will be an interesting one. You know my list now. The war is coming. But can I actually perform with an army which I'm not that familiar with, which I think is why a lot of you guys voted for me to do it, uh, against, let's face it, some top, top tier lists. Now, shout out to Sean Naden, who won the LVO, who <laughs> basically put Orcs really seriously on the map. Not that there weren't some other awesome players like Ben Jurek and so forth that have also uh, run Orcs with great success. But let's face it, I don't think they've been considered the top tier army to run. Um, there have definitely been some other contenders, I think, above them, but it shows that you can, and they can be run um, as you know, a top tier army. So I'm not saying that the Orcs are bad by any far stretch, but I'm saying that I think you need a much higher skill cap uh, to use them well. Let's see if I've got that skill cap, because if I don't, I'll have to buy a new cap, right? Until next time, guys, I've been Lawrence. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to catching up with you in the comments. Goodbye for now. And the golf culture, oh, oh it's golf culture, that makes no sense. And, oh no. Is that what it is? Oxford, it is an Oxford Bowman detachment. So we've gone for a primary, what's it called? Cut, start the whole thing again. Today, I'm running it in my list. Didn't know where I was going with that. So we've gone, right, start again, last try.